getting things, getting ready. We also added some captains. I want to mention that for a couple minutes, and that's uh, JT Barrett, uh, Ray Kwan, and Pat Elfline were recognized as captains. First time I've done that immediately after the festival, and because uh, of the lack of experience on this team, and they've done a, a very admirable job, and uh, love those guys. We also took a vote, Joe Berger, Gary on Taekwon, Billy Price were also uh, selected captains. I like more than less, obviously, over the years you can see that. Uh, that doesn't mean that Veda and some of those other players aren't captains, because they certainly are going to be leaders. I think Mike Rabel said it best, even when he uh, we had this conversation when he was here, that he was not elected captain, but he certainly was a captain. So. Well, that's a big part of our program and our culture, and uh, we need them to step up. Uh, very, uh, I want to say a couple things also about a uh, uh, great school that we're playing this week, Bowling Green. I love that school. Uh, Paul Krabs, a former Buckeye, was an assistant AD here, hired me in, what was it, 2001. And uh, I took the job at Bowling Green. Uh, I remember taking the home, the wasn't sure what to do, and I took home the uh, media guy. And the one thing that uh, <laughs> I loved about Bowling Green is that and the reason we took it, first of all, I really appreciate the administration there and, and uh, a lot of respect <coughs> to the previous coach, Gary Blackney, but they had a winning record against every team in that conference overall record. So that tells you, you know, taking over a place that's never done it is hard, but take over a place that's done it maybe has fallen off a little bit. And you know, as I still remember that to this day, that when I think about Bowling Green, it's one of the most traditional rich programs in the MAC. And uh, a lot of great respect for him. Loved my time there, and, and uh, a lot of great people there. So I'll answer any questions for you. We're excited to get going this week. Uh, fourth row, uh, right, uh, Nick. When you look at those two years at BG, you had such a close relationship with those kids. How did they, when you look now, how did they impact the coach that you are now and the person that you are now? It's probably the, uh, Shelly and I were talking about this the other day, it's probably the closest. We, I'm still extremely close with those players. We had a little reunion last year up there, uh, fundraiser, and a lot of guys will show up at practice out here still, and, and I keep in touch with them. And You know, it was one of, one of the really neat experiences, zero expectations, uh, and that's obviously you don't experience that much anymore. But I remember we, we got a, one of those preseason magazines came out, I think we were 129, pre 119 or something like that. That was our ranking. I thought, you have to be blanking me when I saw that. <laughs> I didn't know there were 129 teams or 119 teams. So I was in that thing all over the weight room and a uh, 36 year old coach trying to get a team motivated. It uh, was ranked preseason 119. Good thing is we did not finish 119. You pushed that team so hard, and your first game was at Missouri. Did you worry at all that if you lost that game, that you might start to lose some players? Yeah, I did. Uh, we had, I think, 50-some players make the travel. We were allowed to take 70. Didn't have 70 players. We got on a plane and, and uh, had some receivers that couldn't catch. So we did empty and we put the guys over here. But no one knew that. So Missouri still covered them. We <laughs> threw the guys because we had some very good ones that could catch. Gurley and Robert Redd and those guys. Uh, we sat there in uh, Columbia, Missouri. I wanted to take this whole press conference going down memory lane. It was pretty good. Uh, we sat there and I looked at Shelly and said, what if we lose every game we play? Because I mean, who knew? And uh, she says, I bet she'd win tomorrow. And I looked at her and I said, we have no freaking chance of winning this game. <laughs> <laughs> and I woke up the next, something happened in the middle of the night. And I'm going to wake up and say, we're going to, you know, our staff and our players, uh, they did what they did. Second row left. Lori? Uh, can you say about Thorne's Gibson's situation, I guess? Uh, yeah, it was not an athletic department of football, and I disagree with it. So. Let me ask this. When you're facing a young opposing quarterback, you can throw an exotic blitz. When you're facing a young defensive line, you can run it more. What do you do when you're facing and you want to exploit a relatively inexperienced coaching staff? Well, you try to do as much history as you can. I mean, we've gone. It's almost silly what coaches do nowadays. We went back two years to find out, you know, he uh, has a Texas Tech background, and, and then with a the defense coordinator, we looked at his background, and, and uh, we chased some ghosts most of the time. You have to be prepared. The first three games, it's, we, we witnessed that around here. You know, Virginia Tech got us. So we have to expect the unexpected. 
And what does that mean? That means we worked on odd, we worked on bear, we worked on four down. I'm talking from an offense perspective. Uh, having a veteran quarterback helps, and a veteran center helps. But we're, you know, you're going to go back and look. We understand they might have some depths and concerns of some uh, positions. But really, it's, it's all about execution for us and, and uh, uh, making sure that we at least are covered some of those unexpected looks. And on, de on defense, on offense, excuse me, it's those three different fronts that you have to be, because you look like a fool like we have before if you're not ready for it. Front row left, Doug. Urban, what can a coach do or does a coach do if you disagree with the university suspension of one of your players? Is there, is this a unique situation for you or is this something that during your tenure you've dealt with at the time? It's not unique. We have dealt with it. Um, when you were just talking about the Bowling Green days there, you just had like the look on your face just talking about, you look like you love talking about that time. What's, what's the most fun you've ever had as a coach and how, I'm sure, we assume you're enjoying yourself now, how does what you enjoy now compared to what you enjoyed then, I'm sure some things are the same and some things are very different. I think the low expectations where a kid, you know, a player, you know, I, I, another quick story because you'll love this one. So we couldn't, by work, I walk in the first workout, kids are wearing like Budweiser t-shirts and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to, obviously that's not going to make it real well. So I started going berserk like I do and, and we don't, didn't have the money to have a workout here and shoe. You know, everybody's wearing different colored shoes. And, and so uh, we had to go raise some money for some gear. And, uh, we were Adidas at the time. So I asked, I made my contacts with Adidas. And I said, well, maybe a little help here. Well, we're not, you know, we can't really do Bowling Green right now. And this is before the Bowling Green's got to, you know, they've done very well recently. But uh, so I worked it out of a deal with like 2500 bucks or something. And they said, we'll get you some shoes. And they came and they were, like, I think they were blue and gray. <laughs> the colors are orange and brown. But it didn't matter, man. The kids got blue and gray shoes to wear now. <laughs> That's, that tells you the expectation level of those young people that, hey, thanks for the t shirt, coach. I appreciate it. But it's, no one said these aren't our colors. But they got a free t shirt and a pair of shoes. So that, that was probably the moral of the story, the point of the story is that. Zero expectation. They want nothing other than to find somehow to finish their careers with a winning record. That was a whole mantra. Finish their career with a winning record. The seniors. So can you, I mean, will, can you enjoy this the same way when there's sure. gigantic expectations? Yeah, yeah. And I think you can. It's all about the people you're around and all that. And, you know, the great schools. So yeah, sure. Front row right, Austin. Urban, I'm sorry that I'm going to continue this tour down memory lane, but. Uh, Tim Tebow's got, he's having a baseball workout this week. Um, it's a pretty big career change. I, I wonder if you remember during the recruitment of him if you watched him play baseball. Incredible, yeah. Incredible baseball player. Really? Oh, yeah. That's, that's when I bought the, I drank the Kool Aid when I watched because I kept hearing his Tebow, Tebow, Tebow. I got a little tired of it. And I went and watched him play um, in spring baseball. He's playing outfield. I've never seen a guy change a game, motivate, lead. Do everything that I want to win to that. That guy is one of the most unique players I've ever seen. I'm sure, uh, maybe you haven't. Have you talked to, to him about this change, or uh, do you think he can do it? Yeah, I kind of knew a while back. He, he chatted, uh, he visited here earlier, and this actually has been in the works. You know, I mean, it, he's been thinking about it for a while. This thing just happened overnight. Right. And uh, I'm very biased, and everybody knows that, and uh, don't count him out. I'm very biased. Front row right, Tim? Yeah, Urban, uh, Raquan McMillan, when you got uh, the commitment from him, and obviously he wrote early, but uh, the Von Bell pickup was a big deal. I broke my glasses. Uh, the Von Bell pickup was a big deal, but, but when you got Raquan from the heart of the South, and stuff, what did that mean to this program from the standpoint of, I guess, establishing the flag down in Georgia, et cetera? That was one of the biggest ones we, we uh, was uh, Von Bell and Raquan were big, that uh, those were the logical choices for them to come up here at that time. Now I think it's a little more logical. However, uh, Ohio State has a nice history. At, uh, uh, great player with the Steelers now. Cam. Cameron Haywood. We've got uh, Ryan Shazier came from down south. Yeah. But those were kind of areas that were you know, uh, untapped 
Those are big. Those, those are two big hits. But did, it was Raekwon that kind of guy that people, did you notice that people would follow? I mean, like uh, Jalen Holmes talked about that, you know, about how much you know, he meets the guy and he wants to play with him and stuff. Have you noticed no that? About him? Yeah. yeah, we knew that right away when we went to Stoss High School and watched him perform and the leadership skills he had. And I think that's where Mark Mantoni and his staff do a great job. You want to try to get those guys that can get all those group shots and all that other stuff. That, uh, yeah. We have a bunch of them right now. And uh, one of the things, like you were talking about a while ago, when, when you're trying to get a handle on Bowling Green, Texas Tech, <laughs> what, did, what did you look most at? What did you guys look most at? Did you look at what, what Texas Tech was about the last couple of years? I mean, how did, how did you kind of get into it, I guess? Yeah, we, uh, well, you go from where the coordinator has been, and obviously the head coach, and uh, uh, you go back and see what they've done in the past, and our whole staring for them, and I just stared at it, and it was all, Obviously not only me last year. We look yeah. at their personnel, but you look at what the coach's history is. And on defense, there's co-coordinators who so find out what both those guys' backgrounds are. On. And then offense, it's pretty simple that they're going to do what he knows. That's going to be Texas Tech. Do you expect a big change from them defensively, just scheme-wise and things? What, what, what? Not really. No, it's uh, they're, they're two, the two yeah. coordinators they brought in. Their backgrounds are somewhat similar to what they were the previous couple of years. Front row middle, Dave. I know you guys want to be a lot more balanced offensively than last year. Right. We've talked a lot about that. What is the ideal balance for this offense? 50, 50. Okay. And do you feel like you guys are close to achieving that? I do. I uh, will know more after Saturday, but uh, we have depth at receiver. We, uh, we have a returning quarterback that understands what we're trying to do. And uh, at the end of the day, it's 250-250 is the perfect. I mean, that's in close to that, but last year was in imbalanced. We have to be very balanced. Second row middle, Bill. Urban, I guess uh, along those same lines, um, as you search for balance and offense and you think back to last year and the uh, amount of times that JT ran the ball, I mean, there were games where he had, I think, 20 plus carries. Is, was it too much? Is that where you wanted it? No, it's too much. Okay. Too much. You would, the 10 12 is the area that you want to be in. Uh, direct quarterback runs, where they call it, you know, five to seven, eight, maybe. It depends on the game. Uh, and then he's, he's a you know, natural scrambler. Things break down. I think that's one of his strengths. He, he's one of those quarterbacks that very rarely takes a sack. He's always getting that plus yardage, so it's not there. He just putting it down and gets plus yardage for us. So he's a little more aggressive than most quarterbacks. But that's you know when he's trying to hit the 20, 25, that's too many. And then uh, different topic. Uh, your kicking game, the field, field goal kicking. Uh, Sean Nurnberger, you won a, a graduate transfer last year. who kind of supplanted him a little bit. Where is he at this season? I know you have a walk-on kicker you just took a black strike off of. So where is yeah, Durbin. Uh, I believe that's his name, right? Tyler. Uh, <laughs> uh, tremendous talent. He, he'll start this week. Uh, Sean is dealing with some injuries. He's going to that he missed most of the camp. And this other guy's been kicking fan. He's only hit the 62-yarder in camp. So he'll be our starting kicker. Tyler Durbin. Oh, that's his name, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> he'll do kickoffs and field goals. Durbin. Good kickoffs and field goals. Front row, Bill. Let's go for you, but I'm not quite sure. Two. <laughs> uh, you've had nine months really to prepare for this after that wave of players left for the NFL. How ready are you right now? You think? Well, we're believe it or not, and uh, I mean, this is I'm usually not this anxious and excited. And, um, I think we're pretty ready. You know, we can get to a couple guys. Marcus Ball, you know, we've dinged up a little bit. We're gonna get him back today. Jerome Baker has been dinged up a little bit. He's back today. So just got to get healthy. But our first unit, they're pretty close to being ready. What, what are the biggest, every opener is a mystery. What's the biggest mystery in your mind about what Saturday will bring? Uh, how the players uh, react to the environment of 110,000, 108,000, whatever it is, and you know, the loud the crowd, the, the interest to be hot. How they react to not Pat Elfline or JT, but how you know, how the Austin Max of the world and Malik Cooker is going to respond because they've done really really well the last two weeks. Are all the starting positions settled right now, or still no, not yet? Close. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, uh, the front five on offense, if it continues, with be <coughs> Isaiah Prince and Jamar for uh, tackle. We'll have uh, Billy and uh, Michael Jordan <laughs> guard. Continues to roll, Pat at center. Mike Weber slash uh, Curtis Samuel tailback slash uh, Dontre Wilson. 
that receiver that's still in the air a little bit, but Noah Brown will be involved in that. And then you got Paris Campbell, Tim McLaurin, Austin Mack. And tight end, you got uh, Marcus Ball and uh, A.J. Alexander. On defense, quarterback Joe Burrow right now will be number two. On defense, you have Sprinkle and Mike Hill on the inside. You have Taekwon and Sam Hubbard on the outside. Inside, you also see Draymond Jones and uh, uh, Devon Hamilton. Hamilton. And defensive end, for sure, Jalen Holmes will be. Probably we should slash him as a co-starter with uh, Sam because he's had a really good play. Linebacker, you got Worley, uh, McMillan, and Dante Booker. Safety is Dane. Damon Webb and Willie Cooker, corner, slashing uh, uh, Marshawn Lattimore and Ward, and Gary on the other side. Second row right, Marla? The, do you, th I mean, do you feel like you're a little bit of, you feel like you're going into 2014 when you have all these young guys who you don't know how they're going to turn out by the end of the year? <clears throat> Very similar, and I, I'm really excited about it. I'm trying to hold down the excitement because I really am. I can't wait to watch it play. Made a comment, young team that's not very talented is, uh, but this, this is a talented team and good guys. I mean, this has been a good camp, good people to work with. And we'll just, will you have time for a couple more far left, up front row, Mitch? Can you talk about Joe Berger, um, the <laughs> guy that has made a big impact on, on the field but ends up being voted a captain? Talk about him all day. Uh, I think he, he should be a college football coach. Told him that. Um, it's either that or med school, form or business, or he'll be fine, whatever he chooses. Uh, how did he get there? I mean, how did, why did. You know, we had scholarship offers at smaller schools coming out of the South, out of Cincinnati, and we did a wonderful family and wanted to, uh, you know, has an Ohio State background, as his family does, and, and uh, made a career decision. And he's been very involved even when he wasn't. He's, he'll, he'll start on punt for us and start on kickoff return and maybe one other one. So he'll be he'll be on the field for it. And last question, far left, Matt. Good guys. Are uh, Sorry, uh, coach. You mentioned that uh, you feel like you're pretty much game ready. Uh, you were told us last week, I think, that second unit offensive <coughs> line, some other places you may be more. Um, how close are they? Do you feel like you've made progress in that? I do. Uh, we'll know we'll more this big week this week. Uh, and uh, the the one thing about those guys, they'll continue to grow throughout the. There's someone real young. Same with that defensive line, very young. So they're going to continue to grow throughout. We just want to stay healthy and when their time's right, just don't want to be enforced because of an injury. That's when you get problems. Coach, thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thanks, thank you. How much was Gibson in the mix? Uh, 